Request Management. Request Management in SharePoint Server 2013 lets us prioritize and route incoming requests at the application level. Because of Request Management now, SharePoint can recognize the origin of incoming requests. For example, from external search engines, from different types of browsers, or specific applications. SharePoint can now prioritize requests. By throttling lower priority requests, SharePoint can reduce the priority of certain requests and raise the priority of others, depending on different criteria that you set. SharePoint can now refuse or redirect HTTP requests. It can look at the packet headers, the requester's IP address or subnet, and decide to block that request and redirect it to, say, another server or a SharePoint farm or another web application. And all of these request management rules are applied per web application. So this means that you can now configure the farm so that the availability and responsiveness of the web servers is not compromised. Imagine how beneficial this is going to be because now we can go ahead and tell SharePoint how to handle data, what to do with it, and give priority to certain types of requests. I think this is a really, really great improvement and something that we're all going to benefit from. Distributed Cache In previous versions of SharePoint, each SharePoint server had its own cache. So what this means is if a user goes and requests information, the answering server will go ahead, go to the database, the content database, get that information and bring it back, store it in its memory, give it to the user. If a second request is made for the same information from the same server, if that information is still in the memory, the server will simply take it from there to give it back to the user rather than going back to the database. However, if the second request is made from a different server, that server is going to have to go back to the content database, get that information and bring it back, even though that information may still be in the cache of that initial server. But now with distributed cache, that information is no longer cached on a per server basis. Distributed cache spans all of our SharePoint servers in the farm and synchronizes the data so that the same information is available across every web server. So this means that second request doesn't have to take that second round trip back to the content database and back to the server. So again, another way to speed up our SharePoint responsiveness. Minimal Download Strategy. MDS is one of my favorite new features in SharePoint. It is really, the idea is so simple, but it's so great. It's going to improve the rendering performance when browsing for content by downloading only the portions of the page that have changed. Think about this, and I'm going to show you a little bit more about this in just a second, but this is really, really huge. This is another great, great time saving feature in SharePoint 2013. Now, MDS is activated on the team, community, wiki, projects, app, and blog site templates. Let me show you what we're talking about. This is a typical SharePoint web page, and if you've watched my SharePoint administration course, you've seen this page already. Global Mantics is our mythical company. Now, in the past, if we wanted to come to this page, it would go ahead and say changes were made. This is a news feed and let's say that people are replying to this fairly frequently and I want to see the new information. In the past, what would happen is it would download the entire page. But now with the minimal download strategy, it's only going to go ahead and download the portion of the page that changes. So our header here, the navigation, all of that, if that hasn't changed, it's not going to re-download that information. It's only going to download the parts that have changed. Again, another way to increase the responsiveness of our SharePoint. Faster, faster, better, all around better SharePoint experience. Shredded storage. Now, I know I told you I like minimal download strategy, but I like shredded storage even better. It's my favorite section of this lesson, and that's why I saved it for last. Because shredded storage is going to help us with blobs, binary large objects, documents. 
Shredded storage reduces the I.O. impact when saving versions of a document by shredding that document into smaller pieces and then reassembling it when someone needs to access it. Shredded storage reduces the amount of data saved in the SQL Server content database. It decreases the amount of network traffic between the SharePoint web server and the SQL Server and it allows for faster backup of the content databases. Let me explain how this works. Let's say that we're working on a 10 megabyte PowerPoint presentation. This is version one. We go ahead and we make one megabyte of changes. Let's say we added more slides, we added more animations, more images, whatever it is. This nets out to now an 11 megabyte file. And that is version two. So what's saved to our content database is then version one and version two for a combination of 22 megabytes of data. With shredded storage, we take that same version one, 10 megabyte PowerPoint presentation. We have our one megabyte of changes. But what happens is shredded storage only saves that one megabyte change in version two. So combined, we're only saving 11 megabytes of data to our content database. Now think about that. How huge is this? Like I said before, this is going to decrease the amount of that network traffic because there's going to be less things flying back and forth and less data stored in that content databases. Your content database is going to be smaller, which of course is going to allow for faster backup. Now, of course, there still are some other benefits to all of this. A user will now be able to open a previously cached document. Users can start working in the document before it's completely downloaded. And documents are uploaded to the server in the background. Really, really awesome stuff. A couple more things you should know about shredded storage. Shredded storage is on by default, but you can disable or re-enable it on a per web application basis. Blobs are not shredded on an upgrade. So if you're upgrading from 2010, they'll be shredded when they're uploaded or modified. Shredded storage is also independent of RBS, remote blob storage. You can use RBS with or without shredded storage and vice versa. Shredded storage is going to go ahead and make working with documents so much better, so much faster, and with a lot less overhead. I think you understand now why I say shredded storage is one of my favorite, favorite improvements in SharePoint 2013. Well, that's it for this lesson, gang. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.